Hi everyone. We are going to, oops, shaking the table. Um, we're going to figure out how to um, frame a needlepoint canvas in a uh, not so expensive fashion, which is nice because professional framing is, you know, fantastic looking, but it does cost a pretty penny. So um, here's what I did. I bought three different shadow boxes um, from, I think they were all from Michaels. Let me show you. Uh, this one first, this is a nine by nine shadow box. It's a little deep. Um, I think it could totally be great um, if the work wasn't too big because obviously you kind of wouldn't see it from the side. For a nine by nine, I'd put like maybe a seven by seven canvas in it um, or, or smaller. I have some smaller canvases. So I got that one in two different colors, but I decided not to use that. They're not, they're not very expensive. Um, and this is the I hope it's not a reflection, but, uh, and this is one with gray sides. Um, and then I bought a third one that's actually the one I'm gonna use. It's pretty shallow. Um, let me show you. Looks like that. And basically, it's um, it's got this lip in here and then this, this section. So it's definitely enough room to put a nice needlepoint even with some Dacron in it. Um, you know it could be kind of thick and look fine this is here the only problem was this came with words it said like good times good memories it was um, on the inside like a vinyl anyway I razor bladed it up it came up in like five seconds so so that was good so you do have to razor blade the words off of it if you're gonna use this one this one is called it's by studio decor and it's just called shadow box eight inch by eight inch um and this is what the you know this is what like comes in the front what's interesting is it it had a little thing under it that i suppose it had like pins in it when you know inside the frame i suppose you're supposed to pin your i don't know concert tickets or whatever the plan is to this but look how rumply it is so i was going to leave this in but I had to, I had to peel it off, and of course, all of it's, uh, you know, had to be <laughs> razor bladed up. It was not a big deal, but it was like, oh, that's weird. I'm gonna keep this around in case when I put everything into the frame, it's not like fat enough, um, because that's kind of a deep. I don't know. There's a lot of space in there, so we shall see. Anyway, I figure the best way to learn is to watch another person make mistakes. So, <laughs> so you can watch me either not make mistakes or make mistakes depending on what happens and then um hopefully it'll show you what you want to do or don't want to do so so first thing it came with this backing um which is the the back of it um the little um the little tabs are on the frame instead of on the backing so so this backing uh was white and i wanted it to be the color i wanted it to be so i took um scrapbooking paper and a uh, knife and I set this little box right on top of the scrapbooking paper and just cut out the square that I wanted so that's how you get that um I use yes glue always oh I didn't close it right um always for any paper projects always yes glue um I use this to wallpaper dollhouses um and the moisture and the glue there is no there's like no I don't know what it's all about it's kind of weird because it looks like a lot of moisture in there but once you paint it on or put it on with a foam uh one of those foam paintbrush thingies it's um the moisture's gone so you never have your paper always looks perfect so um that is that put that to the side then we take our actual needle point um you want to give yourself a, just a little bit. You don't even need this much um, when you cut the sides. I gave myself extra, whatever. You can give yourself five eighths of an inch or something um, to, to to glue it under. And then when you get to the corners, cut all the way. Well, this is what I do. I cut all the way to the um, to the stitch that I made. I don't leave any canvas. There is, you know, you can see a little bit of canvas here. But when we fold it under. If there's any little bits of canvas, I'm just going to take my little scissor and nip them off after we, uh, after we glue everything. So, um, don't worry. I mean, this, this stitch is, is hooked in to his piece of canvas, which is not going anywhere unless you really 
you know, schmuffle it. Um, but I think that um, I've never had a problem, and I do a lot of I do a lot of round stuff. I have done four square projects so far. So uh, anyway, that is um, how you're going to cut the canvas. Okay. The next thing you got to do is cut the little piece of mat board that goes behind the canvas that we're going to mount that we're going to mount the canvas onto. Um, you need to use a mat board that. Um, I know, I say this in all of my videos, but it's just so important. Um, this Canson mat board, I'll put a link in the description that's with the little, um, there's a little triangle you can push under the video to get to get the description, and I'll put a link to where you can buy this um, Canson mat board. It's called like Canson Mi Tientes. Uh, anyway, you must get a mat board that your hot glue is going to actually adhere to, because there is a mat board out there that and it's got to be pretty thick. I mean, this is a pretty, um, this is a 16 by 20 piece, which is, I buy just a couple of those and they last a long time. Um, this is some thick stuff. So a little bit hard to cut through, but, um, but it's what needs to happen. So here's how I measured. Um, if you guys watched the one where I did, oh, let me get the tray for you. I'm going to show you the, um, oops, the tray that I made in the other video. I should have thought of that first. This is the tray I made, and there's a separate um, video I made of how I put this together. But basically, same exact process. You're taking your mat board, you're wrapping it around, you're putting some nice paper on the backing, and then, uh, and then you're just, um, I mean, for the tray, you don't even have to go crazy with gluing anything on. This is like, I mean, this is glued onto the paper, but like it's getting pushed in between the layers. So I wasn't that worried about it. Um, but anyway, it worked perfectly. So that's a win. This tray is from Sudbury House and I got it from Stony Creek. Um, if you go to the YouTube video of this, how to make this tray, you can type in like Sudbury House tray and it'll come up. Um, you'll see a link of where to get that. But what I learned from that, <laughs> um, every time I do one of these I learn something, is that I needed to cut my mat board slightly smaller because I was really struggling to pull it around the edges without having any canvas show. So I actually cheated on this a little. I'm going to show you. You can't, you can't actually see, but there was, if you watch that video, here it is, teeny bit of white canvas was showing. I was like lazily not wanting to make cording. So I went and just painted it the same color with a little acrylic. No one would ever see that. I mean, I'm the, you, you and I are the only one that know about that. <laughs> anyway, how I cut this piece was I decided to go two rows in. This is an 18 canvas, um, 18 count canvas, and two rows is a, an eighth of an inch. But I figure it doesn't hurt if you go in a little... A little more because here's what you can do which is kind of fun you can cut a piece of Dacron or whatever you you call this stuff I call it Dacron and you can put it on you know you just just cut it you know a quarter inch in from your from your piece when you're when you're done and then when we put it on it's gonna be it's gonna have a little puffiness they'll have a little like kind of 3d um, thing going on which is I think kind of fun you, you could even put one and then you could cut another smaller one like we do for ornaments. We do usually a stack of three to make it really puffy. Um, but I'm going to go with one. Um, but that's kind of a good idea. If you feel if you cut your square and then like you lay your square down, you're like, oops, I've got too much room. I have two rows on either side. Two, yeah, two, about two rows on either side. And I think that's going to be perfect for wrapping it. So we've got, um, got all these things cut out, right? You've got um, your glue gun and your, I use a um, silicone baking mat and I cut uh, the corner off of the, this is the corner of the baking mat that I cut off to use um, for the hot glue so that you don't burn yourself when you're touching it. I also have nearby tacky glue because I, I, I want to touch the corn, each corner with it when I'm done just to kind of um, seal the 
it's like um so it never runs i mean it's not going anywhere it's inside a frame we're not putting this on a bag if, it, if we were putting this on a bag it would probably be a whole different thing i've never done that so anyway um okay last thing i did what i want to show you before we do our thing is whoop you know what i did wrong on this one i didn't make any markings about what was center so when i centered the canvas on the on the on the whatever you want to call it mat board um I basically just eyeballed it. I think it looks good, but this is a tray and it's gonna usually have like coffee cups and things on it. Um, for something that's hanging on the wall, I want it to be a little more, a little more specific um, in my measurements. So what I did was I took a ruler, I actually used the centimeter side um, because there's more little dots to work with. And I um, found what was halfway on the top and I marked it with pencil because uh, keep in mind there's a lip here you're never gonna see this even if you know you could erase it but you're never gonna see it it's gonna be inside the lip um, hopefully anyway <laughs> um, I measured that on the top exactly half and I measured exactly half on this and now I measured my canvas I'm gonna have to measure it again once it gets wrapped around its um, its piece of mat board but um, halfway is three stitches of pink under the twig, so I know exactly where that is, and halfway here is four stitches of green. I'm going to have to re-look re at that when everything's done, but I, I kind of want to know, because then I can line up halfway and halfway, and I think it's going to perfectly center. We will see what happens. Okay, let's get started. So, oh, and the glue that I'm going to use... Once I have this whole thing put together, the glue that I'm gonna to use to put it down on this is this Aileen's Tacket over and over. You could totally use tacky glue. You could totally use hot glue. All glues come up if you rip them hard enough. <laughs> but tack it over and over um, just makes me less nervous because you can literally like tack it over and over. It's like a post-it kind of. But I just put a glob. Once I get to the corners, I just put four globs on the on the canvas at the fattest part, the part that's gonna to be touching. And then I just set it down and then I can kind of move it a little to adjust. Anyway, that's the overview. Now we'll get, we'll get started. I usually have a lot of little tools nearby. Oh, one thing with the mat board is it's really hard to cut. This little piece that you're gonna cut is, is really hard to cut. So you can score it like three times from the front and one time from the back with this. Or if you have some really good kitchen scissors, these totally cut through this. If you just mark mark everything properly with your um, pencil, you can uh, do that. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna give one dot or two, I don't know, maybe three. One, two, three to the, um, to the Dacron. Don't burn yourself with the hot glue. And there you go. Take this. this. I already kind of bent, I already kind of bent these around just to make sure and look at it from the front, but like do that. I sometimes forget to do that and then I'm like, oops, got my hot glue on. Why didn't I, you know, bend them around and kind of look at them, make sure all's well. You're not gonna have to pull too much if you cut your <laughs> if you cut your mat board small enough not too small anyway here we go gonna put our little um, piece of silicone baking mat there and uh there we go just a glob that glob kind of far out. Get this one a little closer. These can be undone, so nothing is nothing is permanent. Um, these can, if you need to undo your glue, you just take the heat of your, your little guy and you put it against it. And, um, and then it, um, it undoes the glue. Okay, 
So I'm looking at the sides while I'm doing this and just making sure they're, I'm like even from side to side because the next thing I'm gonna do after I hook up the top is the bottom. And don't worry about this. This is all gonna smush out in the, in the folding. So that, and, and you can look at it from the front, just kind of make sure you're not doing anything crazy. <laughs> it looks good. Um, and you don't have to pull as much as you do um, when you cut the canvas too short, like I did on the tray video. I was like pulling for my life. Yeah. looks perfect I lost lost one row on this side and lost maybe almost two rows on this side so I probably could have done it I'm missing that little flower olive lots of flowers on here um, I'd rather have that than to have to be pulling like a maniac and trying to um, and trying to fight against uh, a mat board that's too small. I suppose in future videos I could have the hot glue on the right. It's just all my plugs are on the left. Ooh, I didn't even turn the light on. Actually, there's great lighting in here, but hey, extra light. Kind of tempted to just make two dots but I don't know I've only been using hot glue for about a year so I'm not a hot glue master oh, okay so when your hot glue is not coming out that well you have to stick your next hot glue in I have figured that out yeah getting a better glob Now I might, I don't know, I might put a, eh, I was thinking maybe I'd put a dot under here. There's really need, no need to go crazy. It's not going anywhere. And we're gonna, we're gonna nip off these little extra corner bits and it's gonna look really good. Hopefully. <laughs> it's all just an experiment uh, with crafts, you know. I mean, once you've done something three times, Hopefully you have a tried and true method, but, um, woo. I'm not going to pull as hard. I mean, I wasn't, I was kind of barely pulling, but I was giving it some you know, I'm used to on the ornaments. Like, I'm going to really do it lightly because I think the more I pull, the more I might cause it to, like, flare out at the edges. I don't know. Either way, it's all undoable, you know? You could easily go bonk, bonk, bonk with this the heat on your glue balls and undo the whole thing and completely redo it if you wanted. So... No, no need to stress. Okay. So here's how we look. It's pretty perfect. It actually is not doing the flare out thing. It actually is doing it right here, which is what I was a little worried about. But I'm just gonna push it in a little. I think it's gonna look good. We'll see. So step number whatever is to nip off your little bits of your little bits of canvas so that little white bit 
I'm gonna nip that so it's just brown. And I might nip a little bit of this because this is kind of sticking out. I mean, it's all gonna, it's inside a shadow box, so it's not like you're gonna see every nook and cranny. But I do. Once I have that done, I'm going to dab um, tacky glue, Aileen's tacky glue, on the corners because, oh, I left this open last night. <laughs> so I was going to dab this. Let's see. The only thing I don't have here is a toothpick. Anyway, I'm going to dab this on the corners as like a fray check type of thing. Let me grab a toothpick. Instead of a toothpick, because I couldn't find a toothpick, I grabbed a uh, doll making needle. They're like long and thin, and I use them for, well, I use them for doll making, but I use them a ton for getting paint out of, and glue out of things. Uh, still no. Oh, that's fun. Ah, here we are. There's our dot of glue, and I just sort of dab that and kind of push. I kind of push the corner where I want it. So I want it kind of a little cute rounded corner like that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it looks good. Okay, somehow we have one little thing to nip here, and that guy. to get this glue out. Dabbing. Pressing. I think the next time I do it, I'm just going to cut the canvas just a hair less. God, it's a fine line between fighting to get the canvas uh, around the whole mat board without having any white canvas show and having it cut too much so that it dips in the middle and then you get these like kind of corners that flare out. So anyway, we're learning together. I don't know which way I was going, but this corner needs to be. I'm not gonna get rid of that little piece of um, thread. I only cut the canvas bits because I kind of want um, the thread to just kind of stay where it is even if I have to dab a little glue on it. Oh my God, seriously, people. Everything pretty much works very smoothly until you're doing a video. <laughs> Suddenly, you can't even get your glue out of the... I need a little more. <sighs> yeah, I like the fact that, that it's a great glue. God, I use it for everything. Because it takes a while to dry so you can manipulate things if you need to. It's not like the the hot glue, which is like it is what it is. It dries so fast. It it's, uh, hardens so fast. Hope my head's not in your way. Okay. That looks darn good. I could have done better. Um, yeah. The thing I would have done differently is have a little less of the canvas wrap around. 
I'm going to figure it out one of these days. And when I do, I'm going to put it in the description. So feel free to check the description someday. See if I've ever figured out the exact measurement <laughs> to wrap these. Anyway, okay. Now we're going to put it on here. So what's that? Oh, that's just nothing. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You're going to thank me for this. Get your lint roller out and roll this thing before you wrap up, especially if you have pets. Yesterday when I was doing the tray video, I rolled up a little, one of Ralphie's little hairs into, <laughs> into the thing and I was like, ah. Okay, so, oh, you know what? I'm gonna measure one more time my uh, edges here because I, so 15, and one, two, three, four of those little doodlies. So seven and a half plus two, there you are. It's gonna be the second, the second green stitch there on the leaf. I'm just seeing exactly what the middle is. 15 and three doodlies. I'm sure they have a name. Uh, seven and a half. Yeah, it's still that third, okay, millimeters. That's what those, what those things are called. It's kind of nice when you're not on the inches, um, doing it on the inches thing to get those smaller measurements. Okay, so basically, yeah, I'm just gonna look, I mean, when the, I'm gonna put the glue on obviously, but I'm just gonna look right now and see that this top thing is gonna line up with that second green stitch and that, that one is going to line up with the um, third pink stitch. Now, I could, I could um, put a piece of artist tape like down this line so the line's not so far from the stitch if I wanted. Um, artist tape is pretty fantastic. It's it's like white. Um, well, they, it comes in all colors, but it, traditionally a white tape that. Um, you put on and it, it peels up really easily. So you could potentially put it on this paper and then just peel it up. So whatever works, but I think this is going to be pretty even. Anyway, here we go. We're going to take, I'm going to look at the fattest parts. Um, I'm actually going to give this a little cut here. So it like will lay down a little better. This one too. I probably don't need to, but you know, whatever. Um, that's not the best scissor. Oh, it's kitchen scissors. Amazing. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I don't mind a little, I, I kind of wanted it to puff out. That's why I put the Dacron in there. If it, if it puffs out a little bit, um, I think it'll be cute. Anyway, tack it over and over. I'm gonna put this on my tallest bits, which are kind of where the corners, um, you know, where the corners do their thing. This comes out properly because I didn't leave it open. Maybe cool. I'm not putting it right to the edges for multiple reasons, but one of them is because it's in, I can kind of move the canvas around a, a little bit here and there and not get any glue on this, um, on this paper. If I did get glue on this paper, I could literally take another sheet of it and just do it over. You know, like nothing's the end of the world here. There's no reason to panic. Okay, so I'm just gonna look at my third stitch there. Oh, lordy. You know what, I'm gonna do this on a slant. A little coffee cup's gonna come in handy. Oops. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, oop, don't move. Ah, here. The little silicone baking mat saves the day. Oops, no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Nope, he doesn't. Wow. Uh, okay, well, I'm just gonna do it like this. I just need to kind of get a good angle here so I can see there's my third stitch. And there's my second stitch. Okay, laying it down, for better or worse.
It's not, honestly. God, I not really sticking. Hmm. Oops, there's my dots. Um, this part is so high. You know what? I'm just going to put a little glue on it. I know. That's crazy, but there you go. Let's see what can we... It's a little bit of a high part, too. I think if I have glue on at least all the parts that are in major contact with the uh, canvas, I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm going to be fine either way because it's just craft. No reason to lose your mind. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stand up so I can get a better look at this thing. Maybe take a sip of my coffee. Let's see. Oops. Um, it's pretty good. It's hard to tell sometimes, especially with needlepoint, because it casts such a shadow. Like that shadow there is not helping me to see whether it's even left, right. But I did make my marks, and I'm going to go with that. I didn't make marks yesterday, and I was sort of, I don't know. Maybe it's an optical illusion. Oh, I could actually measure. <laughs> good point. Let's measure. I'm going to do it with the, um, the little guys. I'm going to sit down to do this. If you want to skip ahead, <laughs> of course, feel free um, in the video. But basically, after I get this fully measured, I'm literally just sticking it in this. Literally just sticking it in this frame. And um, there you go. If anything goes awry and it doesn't fit in the frame, like it's not fat enough, um, I'm literally just going to cut another piece of mat board and stick it right behind it because I do have to have, you know, you do have to have some, uh, something for these things to push against. Well, that's debatable, but, but anyway, you have the mat board so you can make as many, um, little backing pieces as you need to fill up the frame if it's not going to, if it's not going to behave. Anyway, well, I guess I'll let you go. No reason for you to sit here and suffer with me. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you for watching, and um, feel free to subscribe. I always share anything I figure out. I figure um, if I didn't know how to do it, maybe other people didn't either. And if you have a better method, um, you know, let me know. <laughs> if there's some measuring secret that I'm missing here, um, I always like to know how to do stuff better. Anyway, um, have a fantastic uh, needlepoint finishing um, and talk to you soon.